Hello everyone, Reza here with another Unreal Engine 5 video. In this tutorial, I will explain how to use Substance 3D plugin inside Unreal Engine 5 and all the do's and don'ts you need to know when you use this amazing plugin. So let's get started. <music> Cool, so let's start with the um, Adobe page where you can actually uh, download the uh, plugin. I'm going to click on that plugin and that takes me to Epic Games page, the marketplace where you can actually sign in to download. So I'm going to click on that button. And of course you log in with your own credentials, either Gmail or Epic Games account or what have you into Epic Games account. Now you can um, basically add your plugin to the engine. So you can either add to the card or you can click free and add that plugin to your account and to your Unreal Engine 5. Open in launcher. I'm going to click on that and accept and close this pop-up window. And of course, that takes me to Epic Games Launcher where I actually download the plugin. All I need to do is to install to engine. So click and it asks or verifies what version you would like to install it to. Obviously version 5 and it goes through the installation process through the download page and you can see that um, in the viewport as well. We're done uh, with the installation process. Let's launch Unreal Engine 5 and get to the project browser window. Now I have the project browser open. It's time to specify the location, project name and the industry that we are using through this project browser. So I'm going to go to games. I'm going to go with a blank scene. Um, we don't really use uh, starter content. I already have a model that I would like to bring and test a Substance plugin. Ray tracing should be off. UE5 lessons is already selected. It's that folder right here. And I save all of my lessons into that folder. I just need to name this. So I'm just going to call this lesson nine underscore Substance plugin. Now it says that uh, you know you need to have a shorter naming. That's totally fine. Substance will get the job done. And I'm gonna go ahead and create. Perfect, I'm here. Let's start by preparing the scene and putting together all the folders that we need to have. So I am going to start by lesson underscore nine. And within that, we need to have four folders. One is called level and that levels folder is going to hold our new levels. The next one is going to be props folder and that props folder uh, will keep all the 3D objects that you may bring from your 3D software packages. In my case, is it is Autodesk Maya. Uh, the next folder I'm going to create, it's called materials. We'll definitely need to have some materials in place. Some may not have materials. And because of that, we're going to use substance plugin. And of course, with every material, you may or may not have some texture. So I'm just going to put that in place just in case, see how we go. I don't mind create a brand new level. So I'm just going to go with the basic one and let's save all of that and save the current level. And I can easily save that current level into this levels folder that I've created. So everything seemed to be okay. Time to load up the plugin because right now Substance plugin is not um, here. We need to activate that. To do that, you just go to edit and you pay a visit to plugins. 
and you just type in substance. Substance plugin is here. You're going to take that. And of course you need to restart the engine to load up the plugin. So I'm just gonna go ahead and restart now. And the reason I'm doing this right now because it's much faster to load up Unreal Engine as opposed to setting up the entire scene, bringing the model, the materials and everything, it's going to take more time. So restart now. And you can see it will go through restarting the engine fairly quickly. Fantastic. I'm going to close the plugins window. And if you look closely, uh, we now have the Substant 3D button. And that's the plugin that we are going to use for this tutorial. Now let's switch back to Maya and have a look at what model I would like to bring to Unreal Engine to basically test our scene. So I'm just going to minimize um, Unreal Engine 5 and let's bring up Autodesk Maya. Cool, here's the model that I uh, have in mind. It's uh, more like an office, futuristic looking office. Um, there's really not much to it. So um, I've got few groups for pipes, for this crate that we're going to texture, for these walls that we are going to texture, and for the door that again, I would like to texture. Uh, this group right here and uh, the pipes, I've already gone ahead and textured them using uh, Adobe Substance 3D Painter. So I really don't need to worry about them. And I'm going to focus on these three models. So if I look at the UVs and bring them over, you can see there's nothing special about this. No flipped shell, no overlapping shells. Everything is within zero to one. Um, same with the door, of course, fairly straightforward. Um, I can actually go ahead in here and just ever so slightly bring the whole thing to the position just to make sure that everything is within zero to one and you do not have any issues there. And of course, I've got walls, which I will talk about later. I would like that to be a surprise because uh, something is missing when it comes to this model. But without getting too much into it, if you look at the render that we have right now, I've got some emissive materials, a red emissive material, a blue emissive material, and of course, a white emissive material. So ideally, I would like to preserve those inside uh, Unreal Engine 5 when I bring everything to the engine. So we've already gone through the process of exporting in our uh, basic lighting tutorial tool, so I'm not going to spend any time on it. Feel free to click on the pop-up banner on the top right, and I will put the link in the description below so you can sort of access that uh, video tutorial. That video walks you through how to export your model. So um, let's go through that. You can go send to uh, Unreal Selection or you can go to Export Selection and go to the Option box and from here pick either FBX or OBJ. Uh, I'm going to actually pick FBX and let's switch back to Unreal Engine 5 and have a look at the scene. Cool, here I am inside Unreal Engine 5. I brought the scene and basically distributed um, all the materials, textures, and props into the folders that we created in the previous chapter. So we're ready to go. I'm still using this um, new level, basic level that we created. So everything is good to go. Uh, I've also gone ahead and uh, put some lights in the scene. Well, uh, to begin with, there was some default lights and um, that I really didn't tweak that and of course um, what I did I created a sort of a few night time ish looking scene as well just to give it an artistic look and that allows me to kind of test um, my materials um, during daytime and nighttime so I can turn this off at any point of time turn this one on and just uh, dropped in a post process volume as well we've got just a fixed exposure for the entire scene again these are the things that i already talked about during my uh, lighting video so if you're in doubt definitely check those videos let's get to the 
Substance 3D plugin part. Now I'm ready to go. All I need to do is just to go in here and click on this arrow for this Substance 3D plugin that we loaded in the previous chapter. Uh, you can have access to Substance 3D assets to bring in some 3D assets. I really don't need to. I already have a 3D asset in the scene. And you can go to 3D community asset and get your hands on not only 3D assets, but also textures. So I'm just going to click on that. And that is going to take me to this page. Now you can see you have access to just under 800 materials that you can use and uh, bring them into your scene and apply them to your model. So let's see what we need. If I just toggle back, we need a material for this crate, hopefully a wood material, some sort of a material for the walls and a material for the door. So what I'm thinking for the door is some sort of a metal, um, interesting looking material, not too complex. Same for the wood and for the walls. Uh, I will deal with this in the next chapter because as I said, something is missing in this object and I intentionally kind of mix that in. So it's an opportunity for us to learn about different scenarios. Okay, just uh, let's focus on the wood at this stage. Let's switch back to the page. Cool, and I'm gonna go in here and pick wood. And let's see what we have. We have different types and I am not really quite sure what I want. Um, so I'm just going to see, for example, this one looks interesting, this one looks interesting. Um, Oh, painted plank. So let's have a look. I'm going to click on this. Looks actually too stylized for this particular project. But again, we just want to have fun. I want to learn. Probably not the best choice, but I really like the style and the look of this. Now you can see you can download SPSAR file. Um, in case if you don't know what SPSAR file is, it's a compiled SBS file. And in case if you don't know what SBS file is, it's a Substance Designer source file. Uh, the difference between these two is for SBS AR file, you really don't need to have Substance uh, Designer to open the file. And in case if you're wondering, do you really need to visit this 3D community asset every single time you would like to bring a texture into Unreal Engine, you know, you really don't need to. If you're using Substance Designer or Sampler, you can actually export your final texture as a SBSAR file. And once you have those, then the process of bringing those asset files into um, Unreal Engine is pretty much the same. So let's go ahead and click on download. And it's going to save the file. Right, one down, three to go. The next uh, material I'm trying to find is a sort of a metal. So I'm just gonna go and find a metal material. Wow, we've got some really cool ones in here. Uh, this one looks actually really good. So I'm just going to click on that. Metal with holes. Yeah, that gives us enough. I don't wanna make the door too complex or put too much patterns in it. Again, the whole idea behind this tutorial is not really to look dev something, but to understand how to bring a material inside Unreal Engine. So I'm just going to download that one as well. Um, again, at any point of time, I may go back and download some extra materials in there. Uh, I've got some really cool looking sci-fi um, door panels or floor panels. Um, so uh, I've got one in here as well, sci-fi floor tiles. I'm just gonna have a, a quick look at it, see how it looks. And that looks really nice. Again, sci-fi floor tile metal. These are the keywords that have been used for this. So it's got a bit of a tiling uh, situation going on and uh, looks very futuristic. I'm definitely going to download this. And there was another one that caught my eyes and that's this one here and this one here. Actually, I'm going to download both. You can click on this little guy here to download. So that should really do the trick. One, two, three, four, five. I will be using probably three only. Uh, we see how we go. 
All right, going back to Unreal Engine 5, it's time for me to transfer these materials into Unreal Engine 5. So let's go to the next chapter and apply our materials. I'm just going to go in here under lesson nine. I need to create another folder and I'm going to call this substance 3D mat for material. I'm going to start with the plank painter wood texture. And as soon as you drag and drop, and of course you can right click and import um, getting the same result, I'm getting this window substance import options. Let's see what this is about. I'm just going to maximize it so we see everything in here. Uh, first things first, create default instance. Well, that's fantastic because every time you use a master material, we all prefer to have an instance material and deal with parameters as opposed to the material graph. So almost every single time you need to have this ticked. Otherwise, if I turn this off, you can see all the options will go away and you just deal with the master material by itself and you need to create your own instance material whereas this guy does that for you. Now the path has already been created but in case if you need to change it you can always specify default instance path and relocate your instance graph and that's the name for it. The suffix inst meaning instance. This node comes from the original SPSAR file and it gives you some parameters, more on that later. Um, then you create the actual material from the SPSAR file, you name that um, whatever you want to name it, underscore mat, and that is your actual material. That's the material that you actually drag and drop onto the model. And we almost deal with the same scenario where you can specify a, a different location for the material or leave it as is because we already have a folder for it called substance 3D underscore mat and both nodes will go into this folder. Then we have material template type, which is do you want to use this material and use it from scratch or you would like to assign a parent material to it, which we're not going to use, or you would like to generate a material inside Unreal and make that a parent, which again, that's something that we really don't want to use. We want to use that substance default material that we picked and assign that to our object. So the only thing left is this drop down here. And because I have proper UVs on my models, I would like to use Substance Standard Template because that template allows me to use my UV information and apply the texture on to the model. Simple as that. So I'm just going to go here and import. And that gives me these nodes. This is my original SPSAR file. Um, Unreal calls this instance factory. Then we've got parameters that comes out of this asset file or asset material and that allows me to tweak the attributes for this material. Then we have all the maps with the correct color space and I just love that about Unreal that simplifies everything for us. For example, if I double click on this, you can see sRGB is on. It's an sRGB file. We don't need to do any extra work. Whereas if I click on the met metalness or metallic, sRGB is off because it's a linear file. So it's all done for us. We really don't need to do anything. And we get to have the actual material, the one that we can drag and drop. If you look at the parentheses in front of the name, you can see it's a material instance. Um, if I double click in here, you can see uh, that I'm getting some attributes to play around with, which is fantastic. That's exactly what you expect to see. And from here, you can actually change if you want, only if you want, you can change the actual base color texture along with metallic roughness. And you may say, Reza, why is it useful? Well, sometimes you need to make adjustment to the texture. With that, you can take that texture to an, an editing application and tweak the 
texture, tweak its metalness map, tweak its roughness map, and re-import it and select those as your new roughness map, only if you need that. Um, and you have control over its tiling. You can uh, offset and tile and scale if need be. So that's very handy. And that's how you basically work with a, an instance material. I have a, a complete video on this. So if you're unsure about instance material and what's the difference between instance and parent, make sure to check out that video. I put the link in the pop-up banner on the top right. No, thank you. I don't want to save at the moment. So that's pretty much it. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go in here and just drag and drop this guy onto the crate. Now you can see it looks crazy because I need to make some adjustments when it comes to the tiling of it, the position of it, so on and so forth. So bringing a material is really that easy. So let's go in here and readjust our material a little bit so it looks better, um, at least the way that it distributes. And only then we deal with its color because I really dislike this blue, at least not in this scene. It just doesn't go well. But you may have noticed, if I double click in here, there is no option here for me to change this color. And that's another reason I wanted to bring this material because sometimes you actually need to change the color. You may say, Reza, well, you explained it. You just bring this into a program like Photoshop and change its color. Well, actually, there is a much easier solution to that. You can actually do that right inside Unreal Engine 5. So I'm going to click on this wooden crate, pressing F to zoom in a little bit. And obviously, the scale is a bit off, tiling is a bit off, so we need to actually address that. I'm gonna go in here and move that to the side so I know what I'm doing. I'm gonna move this guy here and zooming it up, position it carefully, and that should do the trick. Let's see what options we have to at least um, fix the placement of this material. We've got tiling, that's fantastic. So let's make use of these parameters and readjust the wood pattern on this material. And you can uh, sort of play around with some decimal values and really tweak that. So that aligns, these two pieces align beautifully. And I'm quite happy with what I'm getting right now. So the placement of it, call it done-ish. Um, so I'm just going to go in here and save and close. Now, let's deal with its color. When it comes to extra attributes, that's where you use this underscore inst, which is coming from this SPSAR file. This one is called Substance Graph Instance. So this is Material Instance. This one is Substance Graph Instance, which is coming from this material right here. So based on the type of SPSAR file or asset file that you bring into Unreal Engine, you may get, get a slightly different attributes inside your Substance Graph instance material. So I'm just going to double click on it here and you can see we have access to extra attributes. The output, you may turn things on and off here. Say, I don't want to have a normal map or I don't want to have a roughness. Uh, maybe I would like to introduce a height map. If that's the case, you click on this magnifier and actually browse to bring that asset or attribute and then map into your content browser. So that's very handy. And based on what you've imported right here, you're getting these tick boxes. But the beauty of that is this. You can actually enhance the resolution. I'm just going to close this content browser right here. If you feel like you need more resolution and you have a close-up shot of this crate here, then you go and give this a higher resolution. 
you want to randomize the texture you can do that right here tiling also can be done here so x amount look what this does it actually takes care of the texture for you y amount you can pretty much do the same thing so I really like that about graph instance material because it actually allows you to even tweak your tiling and the nature and the look of your textures even further. Now the part that I'm really pleased about is this where you can actually change the color of it. So let's say I really don't like this um, pink color. Well, it looks actually beautiful, but it doesn't go well with what I have in the scene. So I'm going to turn this completely off and turn it to a black color. As you can see, that immediately took place. And this blue color, although it looks really cool, may not go well with what I have. So I personally would like to use a sort of a different look. That doesn't look too bad. I'm just going to sample one of these guys right here um maybe slightly bright brown color and that should do the trick yep yeah, i'm quite happy about this i'm just going to go and hit save and close and you can see we successfully brought in a material and assigned this to our model now let's do the same thing but in a much quicker fashion apply the metal that we have the metal with holes material that we have to this door right here and at this point of time i actually would like to try this out and have a look at it in the night time as well to see how this looks in night time or in a darker environment it's not particularly night time but a dark environment so i'm going to turn off default lighting and turn on um, this uh, sort of a night-ish looking lighting that i put together so everything looks pretty good it actually responds to the reflection really well and you can see the wooden crate also works pretty well I'm quite pleased with uh, how it turned out. Fantastic. So, so far so good. Let's go to the next chapter and start working on this wall right here. And I will talk about uh, what is actually missing on this wall and how this can be addressed inside Unreal Engine when you wish to bring substance material onto uh, a model like this. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video so far. Here's our final chapter. Now, uh, I would like to explain why I left this model, this piece, uh, separate. And I want to deal with it separately. Uh, here I am, back in Maya. The reason that I want to use a slightly different method for this piece, because if I go to UV Texture Editor, we do not have UVs on this piece. Every single model in here has got UVs, but this guy in particular does not have any UVs. And that's why we need to sort of uh, deal with that separately. One way is to obviously use your preferred 3D application and UV map it and then re-export this piece. We don't want to do that. Uh, and another way of doing it is to deal with it inside in Unreal Engine 5. Now, thanks to the new feature inside Substance 3D plugin, that allows us to use projection to take care of objects with no UVs. And I just love this new feature inside uh, this uh, plugin because it makes our life so much easier now remember it's a projection so if you think your object is going to be moved uh, if you think your object will be animated throughout the sequence then that's a different story we need to use a slightly different strategy to deal with it but if it's a fixed object uh, if it's an, uh, a rigid asset that you've got in the scene you can definitely make use of projection to take care of the material so how can we do that i'm just going to bring the sci-fi tile that I had in the scene. So I'm just going to uh, open the 
content browser and just drag and drop that model in. Now, here's the part where you need to be careful about. You need to think about, am I going to assign this texture to a static mesh with no UVs? If that's the case, everything else should look the same. The only change you need to make is in here, when you need to change your template. So instead of using Substance Standard Template, you're going to use Substance Triplanar Template. That's it. And you import you deal with the exact same nodes. So if I just go in here, you can see I've got my uh, material instance, I've got my instance factory uh, node, and I've got my substance graph instance to deal with extra attribute that I may want to have in the scene. I've got all of my maps with the right color space all done for me. So let's do it. Now, remember this object does not have any UVs, but if I drag and drop, you can see it looks great. Thanks to the triplanar projection, I really didn't need to do any extra work and I just love this feature, um, new feature rather, uh, when it comes to this nifty plugin. All I need to do is to make minor changes to the material instance and we can kind of call it a day. So. There is not much I need to change, to be honest with you. Um, probably I am going to change the tiling of it a little bit and the tiling is inside a scale. So if I go to texture scaler and expand, you can see I have access to XYZ and alpha. So I am going to move this ever so slightly to the side, bring this one right here so I can kind of play around with it. X, maybe just a little bit. I just want to line up these lines with the door frame and there is really not right or wrong. It's just a personal preference that I have in mind. Uh, maybe rotating that and that should do the trick for me. That gives me uh, some sort of a border around the door and I'm very happy with the overall look. So I can come here and just press save. And if you want to tweak the actual color for the panel, you already know how to do it. I'm gonna to go to Substance Graph Instance, and then in here, you can change the colors, you can change the repetition, you can even increase the quality if you want to. I can go in here and ever so slightly and just change the base color. You can apply a slightly brighter or darker um, color based on what you want. So really, there is no right or wrong here. It's just your personal taste. That's why I'm not going to spend too much time on it. And then once that's done, um, you can go ahead and try that in uh, daytime and nighttime, see which one works for you. So if I go to sort of nighttime, you can see you get some sort of a gorgeous looking um, bounce light on this metallic material. It looks fairly cool. Um, you can even zoom in and see all the tiles. You can increase the resolution if need be. And that's pretty much it. I mean, I can, um, I'm actually tempted to try the other one that we brought in. Um, let's see if I can find it. So if I drag and drop the other one, I'm going to use triplanar and import. And I'm just going to drag and drop that to my object and that looks pretty neat as is. So you can see how much this, um, this triplanar scenario can help us with our situation to get a really gorgeous look in no time. And that should do the trick. That's it. Thank you very much guys for watching this tutorial and for supporting this channel via my Patreon page. You can follow me on Twitter and my Instagram account. I put the links in the description so you can kind of keep yourself up to date with all these upcoming projects that I've been working on. Uh, until the next video, stay safe, take care, talk soon.